What if there were a simple way to empower groups to be creative and efficient in solving problems? Here's the story of how Jim Ruff developed dynamic facilitation in the early 80s. In a West Coast sawmill, John drags himself to a meeting with the management. As a worker, he doesn't receive a salary like his boss. He gets paid by the hour. In these rare meetings, his boss would talk at them and they listened. Like in many traditionally managed companies, workers were given clear orders to follow. For John, the mill feels like a battlefield. The union is fighting the management and the employees and foremen are fighting each other. Here comes Jim. Jim struck a deal with the management to meet with the workers and just make them feel better and avoid further trouble. Jim starts his first meeting with the question, what are some of the issues you might want to work on? In many meetings, it is common to avoid emotional topics. Employees are to only address what is in their work areas. And the facilitator sticks to a rational, step-by-step problem-solving procedure. Usually, to find the problem, gather options, rate them according to your criteria, and decide. Jim takes a new approach. His goal is to evoke a quality of thinking he calls choice-creating. To do that consistently, he designed a methodology he names dynamic facilitation. Whatever comes up, Jim seeks to listen to the core of the message, reflect it, have his reflection confirmed. Then Jim puts it to the charts, either on problem statements, solutions, concerns, or data. Tom starts and expresses his frustration with the foreman and the company. Jim writes the comments on the problem statement chart for all to see. Will announces his solution, fire the foreman. He wanted revenge. Everyone felt to be a victim of his management style and were mad at him. Jack criticizes the solution. We are just making things worse. His and my daughter play soccer together. He's really a good father and fun to be with. When facilitating, Jim welcomes the emotions and different views and uses them to promote choice creating. He turns criticisms into concerns and lists them on the concern chart. Then he asks for a solution. If you were in charge, what would you do? Tom jumps in. The foreman is under pressure. He has to be mean or they think he isn't working. Jim adds this point to the chart data. Jason exclaims, that's the real problem. It's the management system. That's why there's no trust between the management and us. This identifies the new problem statement, how to change the management system. John suggests, let's start reaching out to the foreman. Let's ask him for help on some of these issues. Jim adds this solution strategy to the solution chart. In applying dynamic facilitation, Jim follows the nature of the human brain. It works non-linearly. That means the brain switches between solutions, criticism, information, questions, and more. To follow these dynamics and boost the group's creativity, it's important to elicit and listen to the core message of each person. To not take sides, instead to take all sides. To protect each person from judgment and to trust and follow the emergent process. The idea to involve the supervisor was a breakthrough. The mill workers started relating better to him, and together they made major improvements to the equipment. Some managers felt threatened by the self-organizing activities of the workers. It took them some time to build trust and support the process. Twenty months later, after the meetings began, a regional newspaper, Sacramento Bee, wrote about the amazing results. At this sawmill, all the bickering's just gone away. Their productivity has increased 30%, and men are reporting improvements to their physical health due to the better working atmosphere. To learn more, visit the website dynamicfacilitation.com or buy the book in your local or online bookstore.